Hello, my name is Wade. We're here at Skunk River Cycles, and today I'd like to talk to you about uh, clipless pedals and shoes and why someone might upgrade from toe clips and tennis shoes to cycling specific shoes and pedals. Uh, I guess the, the best place to start is the different types of shoes that are out there. There are three different types of shoes. This shoe here is probably the most walkable shoe. Uh, it's pretty close to being a stiff soled cross trainer shoe. Um, and it's really aimed at commuters and at people who are bike tourists, people who want to frequently get on and off their bikes. To that end, you have a pretty, uh, pretty aggressive sole for walking, uh, and you also have a pocket, which I'll talk more about here in a moment, but the pocket is where you would mount the cleat uh, for a mountain bike style pedal. The next uh, stiffest shoe in the lineup would be a mountain bike type of shoe. Uh, this is gonna be f stiffer sold for efficiency even more, uh, and uh, has a more aggressive lug pattern on the bottom of the shoe because sometimes when you're mountain biking you need to carry the bike or portage and it's nice to have good traction to allow you to walk and again you have the recessed pocket there for the cleat to accept uh, work with a, a mountain bike type pedal. Uh, and finally we get to the stiffest and the most efficient shoe this, the road shoe. And the road shoe really sets itself apart because uh, you have no flexibility to the sole. Again, uh, you, don't, you do that for or want that in a cycling shoe for efficiency. But also, you, you don't have a pocket. You're now walking directly onto the cleat and you're walking on the little rubber patch here on the heel. So this is the least walkable of shoe and it's really aimed at a cyclist who's being competitive or wants, uh, who doesn't get on and off the bike frequently and need, need to walk. So now that I've covered the three major shoes that are on the market, uh, the next thing to look at or talk about are pedals. And pedals can be basically be boiled down into one of two different types. The first type is the road pedal. The road, road pedal sets itself apart because it's a very big platform, uh, which means that you also have a very big cleat to put, that clips into this pedal. And that, that is because the, a road rider is very much into efficiency and you want a big platform to push against uh, to attain some of that efficiency and that power. It also can be on longer distance rides a, a bit more of a comfortable pedal to ride with because again, you have a bigger surface area contact so you're pushing against uh, a bigger area which lessens the likelihood of having a, a hot spot. Um, the other thing that sets apart the road pedal from the next pedal I'm going to talk about is the fact that it's single sided. So you really can't pedal on the back side of the pedal. You really have to aim and clip in onto the proper side uh, on your first try um, and that just takes practice. The second pedal I'm going to talk about is, is a mountain bike style pedal uh, and probably the oldest and the most popular design that's been out there is Shimano's SPD style pedal. It's a double sided pedal that you can clip into either face and you're clipping in by using a very small metal cleat uh, that fits into the pocket on the bottom of your shoes. Um, the other nice thing about the SPD style pedals is that they are tunable so you do have the ability to lessen uh, the amount of force that's used to get into the pedal and the amount of force that's used to kick out of the pedal. Um, there, there are now variations of, of mountain bike pedals out there. There's another popular one that we sell here at Skunk River Cycles that's called uh, the Egg Beater. It's made by Crank Brothers and that model just happens to be right next to it. There is now, another, there's now several other popular mountain bike style pedals on the market. Um, the second one that we sell here at Skunk River Cycles is made by a company called Crank Brothers. It's called the Egg Beater, um, partly because it looks like the egg beater attachment that you might put on your mixer. Um, but that is, that is actually a simpler four-sided pedal uh, that allows the user to clip into any of the four faces without really looking at their feet. But again, you're using a small metal cleat that attaches into the pocket of the shoe, uh, mounts into the pocket of, of your cycling shoe uh, that allows you to clip into either of those, any of those faces. So once you have the basic idea of what the two mountain bike pedals, or at least the two that we sell here at Skunk River Cycles are like, then there are variations on the theme. Uh, there's a pedal that Shimano makes that has the SPD pedal in the middle of it that's still double-sided, that now has a larger nylon body around it that gives you a bigger platform to push against and even uh, ride unclipped, uh, which has been popular with some mountain bikers and, and a lot of commuters. Uh, and then Crank Brothers makes a variation uh, of the same thing where you have a, a platform pedal built around their, their uh, egg beater pedal. But again, they use the same cleats and they mount the same way on the bottom of the shoes. So it's just a matter of how big of a platform, how big of a pedal you want to push against.
So oftentimes uh, people ask, why, uh, why do I need sh cycling shoes? Why do I need pedals to begin with? I'm happy with my toe clips. I'm happy with my platform pedals. And the answer is the reason somebody would want to convert to cycling specific shoes and clipless pedals is because the reality is, especially when you've gone to a double sided or even a quad sided pedal, is that they're easier to get in, in and out of a toe clip. They do a better job of positioning one's foot on the pedal uh, uh, and keeping it in the, the, the most biomechanically efficient position, which is the ball of your foot over the center of the pedal over the spindle. Um, so it does a better job of keeping your foot in that position for efficiency uh, and power transfer than clipless pedals. Uh, and then because you're going to a stiffer soled shoe, like a road shoe or a mountain bike shoe, you're gaining efficiency because your regular tennis shoes flex so much at the bottom of your pedal stroke that you're losing some energy, um, energy transmission when you're pedaling. So um, for all those reasons, clipless pedals make a lot, a lot of sense for someone who is becoming an avid cyclist. They're easier to get in and out of, uh, they hold your foot in the proper spot, uh, and, and you're gaining better efficiency. Today we, we went over the, the three major shoes that are available for cycling to, uh, and the two types of pedals that are out there, uh, their uh, choices for cyclists. Uh, feel, if you have any other questions or uh, need help uh, selecting uh, shoes and, and pedals, feel free to stop in at Skunk River Cycles. We'll be more than happy to help you out. One last thing, uh, what we like to do to, with customers that are new to clipless pedals is we like them to bring their bike in. We'll, we'll put, their, put their new pedals on their bike, put their bike into a trainer, put the cleats in the proper position on the bottom of their shoes and work with them to get them comfortable to clipping in and out. Uh, and that way it's much safer for them to learn how to use the pedals in the shoes than trying to ride outside and, and look at traffic and keep the bike up and steer and all that stuff that's going on. So this is Wade at Skunk River Cycles. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.